So let's start with the games um, from Group E. Mali versus Uganda. Mali won Uganda nil. Khalifa Koulibaly in the 18th minute. And Mali go unbeaten in the group. 16 points. They go through to the third round. While Uganda, Kenya and Rwanda misses out on World Cup 2022. Mali is still alive. It's not guaranteed that they will qualify, but they have a spot in the last 10 of African World Cup qualifiers. So big up to Mali. Well done. Well done. Let me make sure I come down to the proper screen here so you guys could see exactly what I'm talking about. So Mali won. You got the nil. The next game, Zimbabwe versus Ethiopia. 1-1 between Zimbabwe and Ethiopia. That game was a dead rubber. And we won't be getting too deep into that one. You see what I'm saying, guys? So, Zimbabwe scored in the 39th minute. Mahachi. Goalkeeping error. Yeah, Ethiopia famous for that. Them and Rwanda for these goalkeeping errors. But then, Abu Beke and Nazir Ahmed equalized in the 86th minute. To my surprise, actually. So, good on them to get a point And to finish off the World Cup qualifying campaign on a positive note. Ethiopia finished third with five points. Zimbabwe second with um, last in the group, pardon me, with two points. Which brings us to the next game, the big one, the huge one between Ghana and South Africa. Listen, this game left a, a, a bitter taste in my mouth because I don't like the way Ghana actually, you know, qualified for the last round there. It was a very, very suspect penalty given by the referee, and he ought to be ashamed of himself. He definitely got to be ashamed of himself. But on the flip side, though, Andre Ayew did score the penalty in the 30, 33rd minute. But on the flip side, I think Ghana overall were a better team on the day. They had 14 shots at goal, four on target. There was some big chances that was missed by the, the substitute that replaced... Um, who, who did he replace again? Um, Mohamed Kudos, I think he replaced. And uh, that substitute is actually Daniel Kofi Kai Kaire. He missed a great chance. And Jordan all you missed a great chance as well. They had the better of the opportunities. Kamaldin Suleimani looked good on the day. And uh, they, they were indeed the better team. And the goal was merited. It's just not how I don't like the way they got the goal. Because Daniela Marte, you're a freaking snake, you weasel. You didn't need to go down the way you go down. And you went down for absolutely nothing, in my opinion. Absolutely nothing. And I did predict a, a draw for this game, a 1-1 draw. It finished in a 1-0 win for Ghana. South Africa, in my opinion, they didn't threaten too much in the final third. Only five shots at goal. Two on target. They did have a lot of the ball, 60%. You expect that when Ghana scored, they will go into their shell and try to hold what they have. But I'm really disappointed in the refereeing in Africa. And the fact that they don't have VAR, it's, it makes it even worse. There's been some horrible refereeing decisions down in Africa, man. I'm, I'm telling you. And they got to fix that. And it's, it's something that has historically plagued African football with some horrible decisions always there has to be something controversial over in africa but congratulations to ghana nevertheless they did what they had to do and uh, you know they don't hold the whistle <laughs> you see what i'm saying and uh, they qualify for the last round so that'll be it from group g we go on to group h where senegal beat congo and that game finished in a 2-0 win for senegal both goals were scored by Mr. Ishmael Assar. He could have scored a hat-trick, but, you know, he, he scored a brilliant goal from distance in the 13th minute and a tapping in the 23rd. He did get a 1v1 and uh, screwed it up. So, Senegal, how amazing. Finished 16 points as well on top of the table. Unbeaten in the group, they go on to the third round. They will be one of the seeded teams as they are the top team in Africa. Togo comes in second with five points, Namibia third with five, and Congo at the bottom with three. Which leaves us one more group to talk about from today's games. We did a watch along to this one as well. 
DR Congo to Benin nil. Listen, this is yet another. Listen, I predicted Benin to get something from this game and preserve their position up at the top of the table. But Benin, quite disappointing. And they were outplayed on the day. They, they like South Africa, did not create enough chances to actually warrant a place into the third round. So I have to give it to Congo DR. The Emercy Mbokani in the 10th minute. Player was um, held back. Dumb, dumb, dumb decision to hold the player back. But brilliant ball in by Artemasuaku. And then Ben Malang Malango in the 75th minute put the final nail in Benin's coffin. They, they didn't play like the team that we saw all throughout the World Cup qualifiers. And they got themselves to blame. But Congo, congratulations to them. They did qualify in 1974 as the nation of Zaire. So they would want to make it back to the World Cup after a very very long time that is what 26 and 22 that's 48 long years they will be from the world cup if they do qualify next year for qatar so all the best to dr congo the odds would be stacked up against them as they would be one of the unseeded team coming up against a more powerful up opposition in africa but we know africa is very volatile and anything and i mean anything can happen all right do not bet your house on any of these teams just want to put it out there please do not do it it's not recommended so in the next game we had madagascar and tanzania playing to a 1-1 draw so madagascar at home conceded in the 25th minute simon and suva but they equalized through hakim Abdallah in the 74th minute, but Pascal Raza Kanan Tenaina was sent off in the 83rd minute. Madagascar held on for a 1 1 draw. The Congo topped the group with 11 points, Benin with 10 in second, Tanzania third with 8 points, and Madagascar last with fourth. Tanzania had a glimpse into the next round, so did Benin, so did Congo. But Congo is the one that pushed aside everyone else to take that spot. So congratulations there to DR Congo. Look, we got games coming up tomorrow. I did make some predictions yesterday. So we have games from Group A. Let me just go down here and then we'll talk about the table briefly. We only got four games coming up. Niger versus Djibouti. I'm going to go for a 3-2 win for Niger. Thrilling stuff there. Group E, Kenya versus Rwanda. 2-1 to Kenya. Group H, Namibia versus Togo. I'm going for Namibia to win the game. Two goals to nil. Guinea-Bissau versus Sudan. Sudan to win the match. Well, Guinea-Bissau to win the match, pardon me. Three goals to one. Sides are going to be rotated. These are all dead robbers. Nothing to play for. Just pride. And uh, some youngsters, some... You know, all, all the statesmen will be given some opportunities in these games. So, just to reiterate, we will have Super Tuesday, where we have some big games coming up on Tuesday, where those first four games are pretty much dead robbers, as Egypt have qualified already. Mozambique, Malawi, dead robber. Libya, Angola, dead robber. Liberia, Central African Republic, dead robber. But... This is where it gets huge. Algeria versus Burkina Faso. All Burkina Faso needs to do is to win their game by any margin, and they threw. Algeria, remember back in 2014 when they used this format, qualified to the World Cup against Burkina Faso 3-3 on away goals rule. So Burkina Faso would want to get their revenge on Algeria. So this match is a huge one. Then we have Nigeria coming up against Cape Verde. This one is also a fight to the death where Cape Verde wins. They go through Nigeria. They only need a draw from that game. And you would fancy, you know, Nigeria to get something from this. Definitely will. The Super Eagles will, you know, fly in any weather right there. So Morocco versus Guinea. That's a dead rubber. Morocco through to the next round already. But Tunisia versus Zambia is a huge game because if Zambia manages to let's say destroy tunisia then zambia could actually get the spot if mauritania does beat equatorial guinea 
So these groups are set up really, really nice. We have Zambia with a plus one goal difference. Tunisia with a plus seven. Zambia with, let's say, they, they win by four goals. Matter of fact, three goals. Three goals to nil. They go up to plus four. Tunisia dropped down to plus four as well. Zambia would be ahead of them on goals scored. They would depend on Mauritania to beat Equatorial Guinea. So it is possible because you have um, Ina Mwepu and, you know, Fashan Sakala. You have Pats and Daka and them guys for Zambia playing some good football. You never know what could happen. But Tunisia on the day could also get the job done. Equatorial Guinea, they're in a very good position because let's say Tunisia and Zambia play to a draw. Equatorial Guinea beats Mauritania. Then it's Equatorial Guinea through to the next round. So that's pretty brilliant. And we will talk some more about these matches tomorrow and make the predictions. Cameroon versus Ivory Coast is also a big one. And, oh man, mouth-watering stuff here. With Cameroon play at home, Ivory Coast have the odds stacked up against them. All they need is a draw. So Africa is looking really, really tasty here. Like a nice plate of food. I don't mean to remind you guys of food, you know what I mean? I know some of y'all might be hungry right about now. But let's take a look at what the groups look like. Let's go. Algeria, Burkina Faso. Not yet secured in Group A. Tunisia, Equatorial Guinea, Zambia in Group B. Nigeria, Cape Verde. Group D, Ivory Coast, Cameroon. The Those first four groups, undecided. But Group E, Mali through. Group F, Egypt through. Group G, Ghana through. Group H, Senegal through. Group I, Morocco through. And Group J, Congo through. So six teams have booked their place into the final round. There's only four spots left. Who will take them? We will find out on Tuesday. So that'll do it for Africa. And those are my thoughts. If you have any, let me know.